not only my award, this is certainly also Erika's award. We wouldn't have done it alone, either she nor me. So that's for us both. Thanks a lot. It's a big pleasure for me to stand here and to have. It's okay, so put it up. Okay. Here it is. So yes. Okay. So it's really a big, big pleasure for me to be here and to speak here in America because one of our most important mission is really to connect up people. Let me say that as first. This is why we came here, and this is what we want and. When we have a mission, then to unite Scientologists that they work together. Good. Now, what about us? I came into Scientology in 78, was five years staff, left in 83. Don't have to explain the circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then many, many people left in 82, 83, so they were actually looking what to do, and out of that, a free zone was formed in Switzerland. Then, very soon, Captain Bill came into our life, and thanks to him, we could do our way. This is really an important part, and we actually don't remember exactly when we had the Ron Zork or when it started. It was somehow in 86, 87. However, Erika started to audit already a few months after she has chosen out of the organization of the church. And so we built it up. And in 1990, I also got back into the business and since then, I'm the commanding officer of the Bern Orons Org. We then, in 95, well, let me say so, when we were Scientologists, we decided to do just standard technology, as Hubbard has given it to us. And in the beginning of the 90s, there was a big, big hype of rewriting the technology. And we, as we decided to keep on standard tech, we were considered backwards. Really, well, why do you stick to that? That's old fashioned. Uh, we have better methods today, we have better ways. Why do you do that? And we said, no, no, we do that. And Soon, we started to get hooked up with other bronze orcs, which were also backwoods. There was one orc, and let me introduce her right now. That is Daniela. She came to us in '95. She is the commanding officer, CS, of the bronze orc Munich. Give her a hand. If I'm not mistaken, you have never been in the church? No. Yes. <laughs> so, that was one of the connections. And another connection was in Frankfurt. It was with uh, Otfried. Many of you know. His nickname is also Heimdall. So we connected up. And later, a few months, uh, end of 96, we got hooked up with Russia. And, well, in 97, we started with the project in Russia. We, well, they had no training so far, even so they were already three, four years in Scientology. They had no auditor training, almost nothing, no student had. I mean, not to talk about the academy or NED or something the like, just nothing. They have six courses only, and only a few auditors. 
or few people were trained as objective auditors in the Narconon. But that's it. Closer to the microphone. Yeah. Oh, okay, no problem. So, then we started there with the HQS, and first there was just one big org as we perceived it, but very soon we recognized that there are a lot of individuals who are going to make their own org. And that was first. First, we were a little bit shocked about that because it was always uh, splittering and splittering and splittering. You know, in the beginning it was one big org and then suddenly another person split it off, another person split it up. But finally, in, it ended up in a lot of organizations all over the CIS, which is the Commonwealth of Independent States, meaning the former USSR. So, there we have now the orgs, and I think Erika can give you the details about that. Yes, I prepared a little bit of numbers, you know. Earlier it was called statistics. I think we all get a little bit uh, fed up with statistics. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, how can I give you a picture? What happened there? So, I have some statistics. <laughs> but don't take it too serious. Um, I have two parts. Also, when we work, we have really two parts. When we started in Russia, we always said, the people in Europe and the people in Russia. And then we realized, oh, Russia is also partially in Europe. <laughs> okay, so then we decided to say West Europe and East Europe with Asia. Okay, first we start with Western Europe. We have there seven bronze orgs. It means in England, Germany, Switzerland, Netherlands, oh yes, Netherlands. Very strong, two, two orgs there. We have around together 280 people who are taking services. And this statistic means they take services right now. We do not count the people who make a break, maybe for holidays or for something else. Just online we have around 280 people and we have around 60, 16 staff members. That's Western Europe and now Russia. East Europe is Asia up to Vladivostok. From St. Petersburg to Vladivostok. We have there 29 organizations. The vow belongs to these guys there. And 24 CSs. Thousand publics around and 96 staff members. I'm almost at the end. Um, would you like to see a little bit the different groups? Yes. To get a little bit more reality? Yes. Okay, so then we do it. Uh, first, the people from Moscow, please stand up. from Vladivostok. <laughs> uh, 
and somebody uh, from any other cities? I think that's it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. San Petersburg. Yeah. Any other city? Rostov. Rostov. Another city? Okay. <laughs> she lives in Moscow, I know. <laughs> okay, so I would like to say thank you to you brave guys who came over here from Russia to America to Las Vegas, <laughs> which means something. No? And first of all, we worked many years together. You became so much my friends. And I would like to say thank you very much. This award also belongs to you.